What's going on guys, I'm Ars Built and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Redstone tutorial video. In this video today I'm going to be showing you three of my upgraded Trident Killer designs and these are going to be upgraded from my previous versions. So we have three different Trident Killers here, this one in front of me is going to be the standard volume Trident Killer, this one inside of the center is going to be the remote mount Trident Killer, and this Trident Killer on the far right side is going to be the high volume Trident Killer. The only difference between the standard volume and the high volume is of course the output of the items and this thing is going to output items at a blazing two and a half hopper speed which is going to be roughly seven items per second. This one over here is going to put out items about double hopper speed which is going to be about five items per second. There's really not a huge difference however if you're using it on a high volume farm such as a guardian farm or if you're using this for a farm that puts out a ton of non stackable items such as a gold farm then you're going to want to use the high volume trident killer. Like most trident killers the standard volume and the high volume is not going to really work at all for any kind of two wide mobs such as spiders. However, the remote mount trident killer will actually work for spiders due to how it's configured and how it runs. You just need to make sure that you use a block that the spiders cannot climb up on, such as magma blocks going all the way up. Unfortunately, due to how the remote trident killer is designed, it is going to have a slightly lower killing rate than the other two trident killers. A quick and easy way that you can deal with spiders if you are using this inside of a general mob farm is placing down a magma block inside of the center of your 2x2 two two area and then have the water push all of the mobs over it. All of your one white mobs will fall through and be pushed down into the hole, however the spiders will stay on top of the magma block and then quickly die. Once the spiders die, all of their drops are going to fall down inside of the trident killer and then make their way into your sorting system. This will only apply for the spiders that are two blocks wide, which is your common spider. The cave spiders are going to be one block wide and they will die very easily inside of the trident killer with no modifications needed. However, you might want to change out the side blocks going up the trident killer. That way the spiders are not able to climb up the walls. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the standard version of the trident killer. However, keep an eye out on my channel because I am going to be releasing a tutorial for the remote mount trident killer here and also the high volume trident killer here. Both of those will be released as soon as they are recorded, edited, and then uploaded. If you're watching this video in the future, then they might already be uploaded, so go ahead and check the end card and the description below. If they are already uploaded, they're going to be down there and at the end of this video. If you're unfamiliar with my Trident Killer designs, it is one of, if not the best, Trident Killer that's on Bedrock Edition, and this thing is absolutely crazy. So I highly recommend using these on any of your farms. Now both of these Trident Killers, the standard version and the high volume versions, are meant to be AFK'd right next to the Trident Killer, so this would be ideal if you had the farm above you and all of the mobs falling down inside of it. You can use this as a remote Trident Killer, however it's not going to give you any of the experience, and it's just going to set the experience inside of the Trident Killer, and never leave that until it despawns. You can keep this from lagging out your world by taking a Skulk Catalyst and placing it inside of the Trident Killer somewhere, and then just placing buttons around it, that way it does not spread Skulk Veins all over the place, and that will do away with all of the experience, that way it does not lag. However, if you want the experience, you can AFK right on top of it, or directly below it, and you'll be able to gather the experience from this Trident Killer here, and the high volume one as well. The remote Trident Killer over here, this thing is going to send all of the experience and all of the items down this ice stream, and then you'll be able to have a hopper minecart underneath it to gather out all of the items, while all of the experience will continue forward and be routed to your AFK location. What do you say? Enough jibber jabber. Let's get to building this thing. Everything that you're going to need to know is going to be down inside of the description below along with a full materials list for this trident killer. If you find any value inside of this video, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? You don't want to miss whenever I upload stuff like this. So if you saw the first version of my trident killers, you are probably very familiar with this. However, I'll go ahead and do a quick demonstration anyways. As you can see, it spins very quickly and it's not your regular trident killer. We can throw some creepers in and we're going to be dumping 20 creepers per second inside of here and just as fast as they get dumped inside of here they're going to be chewed up and spit out and you can see you have about two items per second coming down your water stream the creepers as soon as we turn off that lever are going to clear out very quickly and they really stand no chance against this thing and we can throw some zombies in here the zombies are going to face the exact same fate we can throw some skeletons in there as well, and the skeletons are going to suffer the same fate. They're going to be instantly chopped up and spit out down the ice stream like everything else. Now, once these guys clear out, you might notice that there is a buildup of items inside of there, and that's just because we're dropping 20 mobs per second inside of there. There's not going to be any kind of system that will be able to flow the amount of items that I'm putting inside of here, so we're going to have a buildup, and this should not happen inside of a real world application unless you have a really fast farm and a really slow sorting system. 
Moving on, I'm sure everybody is wondering how this works with the gold farm, and the answer to that question is going to be absolutely phenomenal. We can throw in a ton of fire piggies. Again, we're throwing 20 of these guys in per second, and it's just going to chew them up just as quick as they go in here. Now, you might notice that there is no experience points inside of here, and that is because I have a command block actively removing all of those experience points. This is just for video quality, that way I don't have too much lag whenever we're dealing with all of these entities. Now one of the biggest issues that I had was with witches whenever this was used with a witch farm. The version 1, the witches would actually fall down in, and something would cause these guys just to spin around and avoid being hit by the trident. So they would just spin around inside of a washing machine and never die until another witch fell in and then that would typically cause all of them to get killed however this would significantly lower down the spawn rates of the farm so i ended up adding in the trap door which is going to be one of the upgrades and this is just going to keep these guys from spinning around so we can add a ton of witches in keep in mind the witches do have a little bit more health and they also do drop the instant potions of health to heal them while they are actively taking damage so they are going to take a little bit longer to die but they still die very quickly now if you plan on using this for a guardian farm, this thing will work fantastic for guardians as well. However, there is a change that we need to make to it. So we want to turn this off and then we're going to go inside of here. Since you are only going to have guardians and no other mobs inside of here, this trap door is not necessary for the guardians and leaving this in can actually cause them to get packed underneath it and avoid the trident and not take damage. So we want to remove that trap door and if you would like, you can remove the observer and that solid block as well as that is not needed. And then we're going to close this back up and then we can throw some guardians inside of here again keep in mind guardians have a ton of health so they are going to take slightly longer to die however they do suffer the same fate and they're going to be killed very quickly now if you have a huge overpowered guardian farm you might consider having multiple of these trident killers even if it's not so much the killing speed that it holds you back, it's most likely going to be the amount of items that are coming out of your guardian farm. So sometimes you'll end up having your items back up like that inside of a guardian farm. And that's only because you really can't get the items out of it fast enough. So if you use two different trident killers and split the guardians between the two, that really takes the load off of the single trident killer and allows you to get the items out of the farm a whole lot faster. Now to truly test out this trident killer, I do have one more mob that I'm going to spawn inside of here. However, I do need to make one more modification, and that's because Mojang has spent a ton of time making sure that this mob cannot easily be cheesed. So I'm going to break those out, and then I'm going to put four pieces of glass here, and then fill that wall back in. And then I'm going to summon this guy inside of here. And as you can see, the warden is going to fall down inside of the trident killer, and he is going to take a ton of damage and sooner than later he's going to die and for a warden he's going to be killed very very quickly and just like that one of the strongest mobs inside of the game meets the same fate as all of the other ones hey guys i interrupt this video to bring you some pretty awesome news as of recently i have just passed the 500 subscriber point and i'm now nearing the 600 subscriber point i just wanted to stop and say thank you thank you for all the support to my channel over the past year or so I really do greatly appreciate it. As a way of me saying thank you, I'm going to be running a giveaway. This giveaway will be completely free for you to join with no charge whatsoever, and I'll even cover the shipping cost. Because, well, who doesn't love free stuff? The giveaway will run from 9am EST October 1st all the way until 9am EST October 31st, and that's 2022 of course, just in case you are watching this video in the far future. Once the video is released on October 1st, it will include all of the information that you need to know, along with all of the details and of course the legal bits as well. The first winner will get an absolutely free pair of PocBuds wireless earbuds, which are an $80 value. These things are sweet. With the 5.3 Bluetooth, 50 hours of total battery life, a portable charging case to protect them, and a touch control, what's not to love? Oh, they're even waterproof as well. They're so sweet that I might just need to get myself a pair so I can watch my favorite content creators at night time without disturbing my wife. Shh, don't tell her. Following the first place winner, there will be three more drawings for three people to win a Patreon spot for the first entire season on the Patreon Discord server, which includes being part of my Patreon-only Discord, early access to viewing my videos, and of course being part of the Minecraft Bedrock Patreon-only server. To make this better, each of the winners will also be allowed to invite one friend to play along with them the entire first season, because Minecraft is fun, but it's a lot more fun when you have friends to play with. 
Make sure that you're subscribed and that you have that bell notification turned on. That way you don't miss whenever the video uploads on October 1st. Now, let's get back to the video. Alright, before we get started building this, I would highly recommend chunk aligning the area that you plan on building this in. I'm not saying that you're guaranteed to run into issues if you do not. However, the only way that I can guarantee the performance and the reliability of these Trident Killers is if you do indeed chunk align it. It does only take a few seconds and there's two different methods that I'll show you. I have a leaf video in the top right right now. That's a shorts video that's going to show you how to take leaves off of a tree and find your chunk borders, which is very simple and easy to do and works on all versions. The second one is the pack that I'm using right now, which is an amazing pack by Foxy no -Tell. That's going to be linked down inside the description below, and that is called his Markers Pack. This pack does require installing a resource pack and also getting a armor stand and a banner as you see behind me. And then that's going to show you the chunk borders along with a bunch of other handy tools. On the standard version Trident Killer that we're going to be building today, the specifications for this is from the bottom to the top, it's going to be 5 blocks tall, and then from the side to this side, it's going to be 4 blocks wide by 4 blocks deep. Unless you count these trap doors and the lever as another block, then in that case it's going to be 6 blocks wide by 6 blocks deep. So once you have your area all marked out where you're going to be building your trident killer, you can remove your chunk lines. So that way you can focus on the build at hand. And I think the easiest way for me to show you in this tutorial is going to be building from the top down. Because you're most likely going to be adding this on a pre-existing farm. So it only makes sense to start here. So you want to have a 2x2 two two area where your mobs are going to be falling down and out of. And for safety purposes, we are going to cover these up. That way we don't have any mobs, i.e. creepers, fall on our face and blow us up. Next we want to figure out what direction we want our ice stream coming out of. So for tutorial purposes we're going to have our ice stream coming out that direction here. So I want to place my block here in the direction that we're going to have the ice stream coming out of. This needs to be a solid block that redstone can pass through. And then once I place that block down there I'm going to grab a trap door. And I'm going to place the trap door on the side of the block on the very bottom. Make sure that trap door flips up just like that. That way it's positioned properly. Next you're going to take two temporary blocks and place one here and one here. Remove that top temporary block and grab your observer. Next you can scaffold up here and place your observer facing down. Just like this. Your output arrow should be facing straight up. You can go ahead and remove that temporary block now. Next we're going to grab our regular pistons and we're going to get these installed. So you want to come to this block right next to the observer and we're going to place in a piston here. Turn to the right, place in a piston here. Turn to the right, place in a piston here and turn once more and place in a piston here. Next you want to grab your glass and we're going to place glass in all of these locations here. And then we want to start placing in our solid blocks. Now these solid blocks do need to be a solid block that redstone can pass through. So what we want to do is turn around here and we're going to place in our solid blocks directly underneath each one of these four pistons. Next we're going to come around here to the side that has the observer on it. On the left hand side of this block we're going to place in another solid block here. On the right hand side we're going to place in a temporary block and then a permanent block here and a permanent block here. Remove that temporary block. Next you're going to work your way to the right hand side. We're going to place in a temporary block here, a permanent block here, and a permanent block here. Remove that temporary block. Work your way around towards the right again. Another temporary block here, permanent block here, permanent block here. Remove that temporary block. And then we're going to work our way around to the right once more. However, this side is going to be a little bit different. We're going to place in a temporary block here, a permanent block here, remove that temporary block. Then we're going to come to the right hand side of this block, place in a temporary block here, and then we're going to place a permanent block here and remove that temporary block. Once all of these solid blocks are placed in, you're going to come to the very center and we're going to place in a solid block here and here, and then two more here and here. Make sure that these are directly below the piston, just like this. The next thing that we're going to do, if we are facing at the side with the observer, we're going to go to this left hand side where we were just at, and then we're going to go down here and place down a temporary block right here, just like this. And then we're going to take our dropper and place our dropper facing towards the right hand side, just like so. And then we're going to place an observer facing in towards the face of that dropper. Make sure that the output arrow is facing into this block here, and the face is indeed facing that dropper. Then we can remove that temporary block. Next we're going to start placing in all of our redstone that's going to control this. So first we want to grab our lever and we're going to place a lever here and turn it on. You can always remotely power this by running a line of redstone into here and then having your switch mounted remotely. However, just make sure this block is the one that you are powering and unpowering to control the trident killer. Once this lever is on, then once you place down this torch here, then the torch should go out. And you want the torch on the right hand side of that block. 
Then you want to grab your redstone repeaters. We're going to place a redstone repeater right here towards the left hand side. Then we're going to work around towards the left and place a repeater here, a repeater here, and a repeater here. Make sure these repeaters are all facing into these blocks that are directly below the piston and all of these should be on the standard one tick delay. Next we are going to grab our redstone dust and we're going to place in redstone dust directly on top of that dropper there. We're going to place in redstone dust here, redstone dust here, and redstone dust here. This is going to conclude all of the redstone for the trident killer. Now we need to work on the system that's going to pull the items out of the trident killer. If you would like you can give this a quick test by throwing on that lever and everything should function appropriately. Next on the side with the observer we're going to go down to this block here and place in our dropper facing in this direction. Next you're going to take your hopper and we're going to place our hopper into the side of that dropper there. Then we're going to come all the way around to the very back of this. And on that same dropper we're going to place in two hoppers going into the back of it. And then we're going to place in two hoppers going into the side of this hopper here that is ultimately going into that dropper. At this point you can grab your hopper minecarts, your rails, and also your fences and you want to come around to the right hand side once more. And we're going to place down a fence right here and a fence right here. Both of those should be over top of those hoppers just like so. Then we're going to grab our rail and we're going to place down our rail on this block here which will place it on top of that hopper. Then we can go around to the back of the trident killer here, grab our hopper minecart and we're going to place our hopper minecart on it. And then we're going to give that a nudge forward where it's going to go all the way forward up against that fence post. Once it's done that you should be able to easily remove that rail out from underneath it and then you're also going to remove that hopper out from underneath it. Then you want to get down here and nudge it over towards the corner. That way it's firmly pressing up against both of those fence posts. And then we're going to place our hopper back facing into this hopper here. Next we're going to place in our ice stream and then this can go wherever you would like the items to ultimately end up. And it's pretty straightforward but you're going to take your packed ice and you're going to run your packed ice all the way along here. And then you are going to plumb that into wherever you need to. Then we can take a piece of glass and place a piece of glass on each side. Then we're going to run this all the way to the end of the ice stream as well. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one also. Next we're going to grab a bucket of water. And we're going to come all the way over here next to the dropper and place down a bucket of water here. This is going to flow out 8 blocks and then stop right here. On the block that it stops on you are going to place a button here. And then place down another bucket of water which is going to continue flowing. And you can repeat this as much as needed to meet your final destination. Next we can go over here to the dropper once more. We're going to place down a temporary block here. A piece of glass here. Remove that temporary block. And then we're going to place this all the way over the top which is going to keep all of your items in and keep them from bouncing out of the ice stream. Next thing that we need to do is grab our trap doors and go around and place a trap door on the bottom side of the back side of every one of these pistons. And then we're going to go around all four of these and waterlog all four of these pistons. If you've done everything correctly your water should look like this inside of the center of your trident killer and should have the swirling motion. Next you can go around and close all of those trap doors that you left open to waterlog those pistons. And then we need to throw a trident inside of here. The easiest way is going to be pillar up on the back side of the trident killer. And then you're going to remove this piece of glass here. Don't remove this one or else the water is going to flood out. Then you can throw some tridents inside of here. Depending on how much your mob farm puts out you might want to use one or two. Or if it puts out a ton of mobs you might want to use three or four tridents. However, make sure that these are enchanted with the impelling 5 enchantment. That way your mobs die as fast as possible. Next, you're going to close this up and then we can give this trident killer a test. So I went ahead and installed a repeat command block which is going to dump in a ton of creepers inside and then we can throw this on. And if all goes well, it should work correctly. And it shouldn't take very long at all to clear out all of the creepers. Well guys, that's going to wrap up this Minecraft Bedrock Redstone tutorial video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys get a ton of use out of these Trident Killers inside of your Minecraft Bedrock worlds. If you guys need any help with these Trident Killers and you run into any issues, then please drop a comment down below. Or if you just want to say hi or let me know what you end up placing these Trident Killers on and what kind of crazy farms you built, then drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. If you would like to check out these Trident Killers beforehand, there is going to be a download link for the world download inside of the description below, so go ahead and check those out. If you feel like this video deserved a like, then please go ahead and drop a like on the video as it really does help out the channel and it helps new people find my content. If you have yet to subscribe, then make sure that you subscribe before you go, along with hitting that bell notification, that way you don't miss any of the future videos that I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.